All set. Can you see the okay right here, are we? Are we live? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me there, though? Yeah. Yeah. No sound on something. The Brady's are saying. Can you hear me? Can you see me there? First of all, yeah. What's the sound like? Is it not? Is Facebook working? Just have to go ahead with Facebook. Yeah. So I think folks are having trouble again with YouTube. Uh, we know we're having issues with it, and um, it has been censored and attacked. So, notwithstanding that, we move forward with the next drop we're going to do, and as you can see, it's the Belfast Telegraph here on Clarendon Road. So, um, again, we're showing the photographs that I mentioned earlier, the um, CCTV stills that show quite clearly that uh, Aaron Brady was not one of the four men who attacked the launch of Credit Union uh, Car Park on the 25th of January 2013. So uh, that is our starting point with all uh, uh, the media outlets that we are contacting. And um, obviously, uh, that alone, that alone should uh, see Aaron free. But um, notwithstanding that, we have to continue with the campaign, get Aaron's message out there. And again, we implore we beg and we demand that the mainstream media, such as the Belfast Telegraph here, in, uh, and all the journalists associated therein, um, become involved, ask these questions. And as we have always said, if anything, that, anything we are saying is incorrect, it would be detrimental to the memory of Detective Guard Adrian Donahue. So, obviously, uh, if anything we're saying is wrong, it is up to the likes of the Belfast Telegraph, uh, and all the mainstream media and the journalists to contradict us and protect the memory of Detective Gab Adrian Donahue. Um, so, in the Belfast Telegraph pack today, obviously we had the photographs, CCTV cells that proved that Aaron was not one of the four raiders. But also we have in the Belfast Telegraph um, pack uh, the transcript of a uh, Homeland Security agent, Matt Chatsky, in Belfast Airport, here in Belfast, Offering James Flynn, who was at that time a suspect, this is back in 2019, the summer of 2019, offering James Flynn inducements, green cards, and to help Eugene Jr. Um, in an ongoing court case that was happening that time, back in 2019. And that in itself needs investigating. <laughs> because the case against uh, <coughs> excuse me, Eugene Jr. was an absolute farce. And uh, obviously, five years later, nothing has gone to court, and it was used as an instrument to put leverage and fear into Eugene Finn Jr. and his family. So we have this agent, Matt Katsky, who is offering green cards, uh, help with this court case, this farcical court case that's ongoing in Boston. And what the Belfast Telegraph has to find out is who or where did Matt Katsky get permission to undertake this most serious of operations that he undertook at Belfast Airport? Who authorised it from Dublin? Who authorised it in Belfast? Who authorised it in the American Embassy in London? Who authorised it with the, uh, the UK authorities? This is all freedom of information and details we need to know. If Nobody authorised Matt Katsky to do this. This is an outrageous and totally illegal action by a member of the Homeland Security Force uh, in acting here in Northern Ireland. I will say once again, totally illegally. So that's what we're handing to the Belfast Telegraph. We do have the recording, if they want the recording itself, but we do have the transcript of the recording here, so it's there for everyone in the Belfast Telegraph to see. Again, because of his actions, Katsky's act actions with James Flynn, this leads perfectly on to um, our friends Martin and Maguire. 
who obviously were coerced, and then we can see the coercion. We have it on tape from a Homeland Security officer, and Chatsky's fingerprints are all over the lies and the disgusting, pathetic behaviour of Christopher Morton and Anthony McGuire giving false statements against um, Aaron. So one gives credence to the other. So we have, uh, again, put some, uh, particularly McGuire's paperwork in here, uh, caught with £30,000 for the cocaine, extradited back to Ireland, everything went hush-hush from January to July 2023, and lo and behold, Anthony McGuire is back in America. How, in the love and honour of God, is that possible? It's simply not possible, or it shouldn't be possible. Uh, and again, Katsky, uh, I, I, we've also included the statement from uh, Detective Ogle and Detective Mary. I think it's 10 lines of a statement where Christopher Morton identified Aaron. They showed Mar um, uh, Maguire, oh, uh, apologies, they showed Christopher Morton a picture of Aaron Brady and said, who's that? And Morton says, yeah, that's the fellow I met three years ago when I was stone drunk in the dark bar in uh, Catona Avenue off McLean in New York. So there's that, that paperwork is in there too for the Belfast Telegraph investigative team to look into that uh, part of the case. And we've also um, put in uh, Sinn Féin's involvement in this case, and how Christopher Morton, uh, who we've proven and shown categorically to be a total downright liar in respect of the statement he gave uh, against Aaron, we have in that statement more, uh, to make uh, to give some credibility to the lies he was telling. Christopher Morton implicated Sinn Féin councillor Anton Waters. Anton Waters is a Sinn Féin councillor in the Cooley Peninsula. And he made some claims about his interactions, Morton himself, his interactions with this Sinn Féin councillor to give credence. Now, we have checked out what Morton has said. He is a liar. Now, unfortunately, we have gone to Sinn Féin um, on numerous occasions with this information. And all Sinn Féin have to do, quite simply, say, if it was true, if Christopher Morton is a friend of um, Anton Waters, if Christopher Morton played football with uh, Anton Waters, if all these things are true, it's quite simple for Sinn Féin and Anton Waters to come forward and tell us, yes, uh, we believe this man. The silence is absolutely deafening. So a booklet we handed to Sinn Féin in the Sinn Féin office in Newry, the Sinn Féin office in Dundalk, um, uh, to LMFM. The booklet is in here with all the details and the pathetic response from uh, the Sinn Féin Council, Anton Waters, towards the Brady family when he told us never to contact him again. So that's all in the Belfast Telegraph envelope. And we have two other uh, journalists we'd like to contact that work uh, with the Belfast Telegraph. And this is um, Ali Bracken. Now, we've had a number of uh, issues with Ali Bracken's reporting, and we have given Miss Bracken numerous details about some of the articles sh she wrote, and we're going to focus on this article here. Apologies, conditions are not ideal. There we go. Have we got that there? Yeah. So, pals of Garda Mother will visit US as part of plan to dig up dirt on key trial witnesses. So, that's fairly straightforward. That's a very, very damning uh, headline there, Ali. So, all we want to do, Miss Barton, is sit down with you and discuss what is in that article. Um, obviously, someone's given you this information. Um, if, if someone has traveled to America, you obviously know who they are. Uh, Privately or publicly, give us these people's names, and if they're friends of Aaron's, more than happy to come and sit and chat with you. But Aaron Brady or the Brady family sent nobody, nobody to America uh, to do, dig any. But we are digging dirt. Now we didn't send anyone to do it. We know we know um, 
the star witness, the star witness, and you all know this, Daniel Cahill, was involved in terrorist, a terrorist group here in Dublin. He was stabbed five or six times because he was selling drugs from one group when he was uh, affiliated in another group. He got stabbed five or six times and told to get out of Dublin. So we've investigated that, we've dug that dug. We know, because Aaron has told us, the tissue of lies Daniel Cahill told in the statement. And we have proven, we have proven, Ali Bracken, that Daniel Cahill is a pathological liar. Daniel Cahill went on a podcast less than eight months ago and proclaimed that he wanted to run a paedophilic brothel. He wanted to sell children. And this man, we have to look at that person as the star witness in Aaron's case. We've shown a litany of problems with his testimony and a statement. And yes, you refuse to look into the dirt we did dig. We are entitled to dig dirt. If someone is telling lies against you, Ali Bracken, if we are telling lies against you and your newspaper, if we are telling lies against you and your articles, call us out. Show some respect for Detective Gard Adrian Donahue. Because what we have said about these people has been lawyers, criminals, legal immigrants, drug dealers, uh, paedophiles. If that was in any way incorrect, we should be brought to bear, brought to book on that. That should be questioned. So what we're looking for, Ali Bracken, is sit down, even just we focus on this one article. And I would say once again, if you have names, I would say you have names of people who travel to uh, America to dig up this dirt, we're more than happy. And with that, Ali Bracken, I want to direct you to a young man called Thomas O'Callaghan, who went live on air and, done an inter and, and uh, sat for an interview and told us, and told the world, and his paperwork, and everything is there to see Ali Bracken, and indeed every journalist in Northern Ireland. This young man was offered inducements to say, all he had to say was, the friends told me when they were drunk, that something to do with the Northern robbery. And that man could have stayed in America. He had built up his business, he had built up a life, he had a wonderful 17 or 19 years in Boston. And it was swiped away from him because he wouldn't tell lies to Mark Phillips and Jim McGovern, two detectives from Ireland. So th these people, and I have three other people who will sit down with you, Ali Bracken, or any decent journalist, and tell similar stories. So some of the information is in there. We also have uh, some details on how an extradition warrant we dug the, the, more dirt on Ronan Flynn. And it is an absolute and total travesty what has happened here. Ronan Flynn had an extradition warrant. He uh, seriously injured a man in a pub brawl in uh, the Cooley Peninsula also. Um, he absconded. There was an extradition warrant for Flynn to be brought back to Ireland. And it disappeared. Details are in the envelope. Details are in the envelope, Miss Bracken. If there's any reason why you don't want to speak to us, please let us know and uh, we'll deal with that. But we're willing to sit down with you at any given time. And even you don't have to speak to us, the information we've given you here, the information we've given you here is um, easy for you to find out. Again, we need help. I'm saying to the Belfast Telegraph and to all journalists, we're seeking help with freedom of information uh, here in Northern Ireland, in the Republic of Ireland, in the UK, and in New York. And obviously, people with your contacts in the media should be able to help us with that. Uh, one more journalist, we're going to leave some information with is Maeve Sheehan. Again, as with Ali Bracken, uh, she writes for the Belfast Telegraph, but I, I do believe uh, both ladies are predominantly involved with the uh, Irish Independent in Dublin, and when we are doing our uh, uh, drop-offs in Dublin, we'll obviously uh, leave some more information for you there. So, what we're looking at here with... Can I give you those? Can just take them out of my hand? So it's easier to... Yeah. Just another article Neil Sheehan wrote. 
and it's absolutely laughable and it's farcical. There you go, mate. Uh, Justice campaign by our family of Garda Killer Brady's a fishing exercise. So the justice campaign is outside your place of employment, Maeve. So obviously you've written these headlines. Obviously you would be more than happy. You should be more than happy to speak to the family of the Garda Killer, as you allege in this uh, headline here. I think that's fair to say. That's the opportunity for an investigative journalist. And again, we will uh, just detail this article if you want to just stick to this one point. That's why we're trying to focus in on uh, give each journalist just one point. And we say, if you interact with us, we will open a can of worms that will open another can of worms that will open another can of worms. And ultimately... What has to happen here, Alan Brady has to be freed. Because you two uh, may have will see the photographs, the CCTV stills from the moment Adrian Donahue was murdered, and you'll see quite clearly it's physically impossible for Alan Brady to have been there. So, undercover US officer slams attempts by relatives of Brady to undermine guilty verdict on social media. So this is a retired NYPD man, James Walsh. And some of what you have written in this article, Maeve, which I really do want to be too disrespectful, but it is so pathetic and uh, childish. It's, it's, uh, it's belittling anyone that your readers. Uh, a couple of simple things. Uh, Brady uh, was forensically aware he was taking his water bottles home with him as to, he wouldn't put them in the bin so he wouldn't uh, give his uh, fingerprints. Such absolute nonsense, Maeve. Uh, there was no uh, uh, fingerprints at the scene. Definitely Alan Brady's wasn't there. But I'll tell you what was at the scene, Maeve. There was an unknown main DNA at the scene, which the Irish mainstream media, indeed all mainstream journalists, have seemed to have... Um, conveniently forgotten to look into. But notwithstanding that, we'll, st we'll stick with this, just this one article. Um, he's trying to suggest that Brady was forensically aware, and then he says, uh, but he wasn't trying to hide. He was in public view. He was in the Gaelic grounds every Sunday, uh, playing for uh, Sligo, or else uh, Alan was in the Gaelic grounds watching games. He was drinking with his friends. He was partying. And you, in the mainstream media, and several journalists, have always tried to give this uh, hint that our Brady was hiding. He ran away, he hid. He was using his own name. He was working. There's um, a reference to his good job, his good car, his nice apartment. Alan worked for all that. And the Homeland Security agents confirmed that uh, on the RTE program, Prime Time. So, this fishing exercise, again, we've put um, more information in rela relation to Roland Flynn's extradition warrant. Just for one example. So, obviously, you were in contact, you sat down, Maeve, with Mr. Walsh. I believe that's fair to say because you've written an article. You either sat down with him or you've had a Zoom call, some form of uh, communication with him. So, Maeve, contact him again. Ask him if he can get the details of Daniel Cahill's arrest and ask him if he can get the details of how Ronan Flynn's expedition warrant disappeared. Two very simple questions for Mr. Walsh. And we will see who is doing the digging and digging dirt on people. We are digging dirt on people to prove the truth. The, Mr. Walsh, Matt Katsky, Pat Murray, uh, Mark Phillips, they are digging dirt on people to make them tell lies, to force them into lies. That's the difference. We are telling the truth. And I will say once again to you, Maeve, and to all the media, if anything we are saying is incorrect, it would be totally disrespectful to uh, Detective Dad Adrian Donahue's memory. So for everyone's sake, it is time to engage. We are begging, we are pleading, we are demanding that the media in Ireland pick up this story and show it for what it is, a complete and utter tissue of lies. So I'm just going to drop these off there in the Belfast Telegraph to move.
Ali brought him, and obviously the Belfast Telegraph itself, and he told he's just going to follow me over to the door. Hello, sir. How are you? I wanted to give you just a, a couple of um, documents and papers for the Belfast if you know what to do. So it's very, very important, please, if you could pass them on. That's lovely. Thank you very much. Thanks for it. Thank you. Thank you. We dropped them off there. Obviously, I asked, and the gentleman wasn't able to get anyone down to speak to me. That, that we understand. So, uh, one more to do about fast now, and we'll be back with you in 15 minutes, and uh, we'll do our last drop in Belfast. Thank you. Thank you.